Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss how to analyze arguments. Arguments can be analyzed in two ways. Number one, paraphrasing and secondly with the help of diagrams. Now, in our everyday life, the arguments we use are generally very complex. The premises and the conclusions are not uh, properly organized and the premises may be numerous and in a very topsy-turvy manner. So uh, paraphrasing means uh, to sort out the connections between premises and conclusions so as to evaluate an argument fairly. So this process is called paraphrasing. So just remember the main target will be to identify the premises in proper order and the conclusion. Now, here are some tricks to paraphrase. Number one, identify the conclusion. How we will know which one is the conclusion? The one statement that is supported by the other statements and that itself doesn't support any other statement, that will be the conclusion. Number two, do not confuse it with sub-conclusion, which may look like a conclusion because it also has supporting statements. Thirdly, find the point. What is the one thing the arguer is trying to convince us of? Fourthly, look for premise support indicator words like because, since and for. Also, fifth, look for conclusion indicators like therefore, yet or although and finally number six clarify the pronouns which means that in the passage you might come across sentences like but this is a mistake what does this mean so this what is this this is a pronoun so if you are not very clear as to what this means then you might uh, uh, confuse between premises and conclusion. Now let's try an example. Just because Jeremy's prints were on the gun that killed Tim and the gun was registered to Jeremy, it doesn't follow that Jeremy killed Tim since Jeremy's prints would certainly be on his own gun and someone else could have stolen Jeremy's gun and used it to killed him. So what is the conclusion of this argument? The fact that Jeremy's prints were on the gun that killed Tim and the gun was registered to Jeremy doesn't mean that Jeremy killed Tim. Now this is uh, the uh, seems to be the essence of the main conclusion in the above argument. If that is the case, then the premises could be 1. Jeremy's prints would be expected to be on a gun which was registered to him. 2. Someone could have stolen Jeremy's gun and then used it to kill Tim. Notice that while I have paraphrased the first premise, I have left the second premise almost exactly as it appeared in the original paragraph. As I have said, paraphrases are needed in order to try to make a standard form argument as clear as possible. And this is what I have tried to do in capturing uh, premise 1 as well as the conclusion of the argument. So the reconstructed argument in standard form will be 1. Jeremy's prints would be expected to be on a gun that was registered to him. 2. Someone could have stolen Jeremy's gun and then used it to kill Tim. And 3. The conclusion. Therefore, the fact that Jeremy's prints were on the gun that killed Tim and the gun was registered to, Tim, uh, to, to Jeremy doesn't mean that Jeremy killed Tim. And this conclusion has been derived from 1 and 2. Diagramming arguments. This is the second technique for the analysis of arguments. 
With the help of a diagram, we can represent the structure of an argument graphically. The flow of premises and conclusions are displayed in a 2D picture. Now, in order to construct the uh, diagram of an argument, we must first number all the propositions it contains and identify which propositions are the premises and which proposition is the conclusion. Then we have to number them circling each number. Finally, using arrows between the circle numbers, we can construct a diagram that shows the relations between premises and conclusions without having to restate them. Now let's try to understand the process of diagramming with the help of this argument. I've, uh, there are six propositions. I have numbered them from A to F. And the uh, words which are marked in red are important, which we will come to know soon. A. If the students were environmentally aware, they would object to the endangering of any species of animals. B. The well-known greenwood white squirrel has become endangered. C. As it has disappeared from the Lander campus because the building of the library destroyed its native habitat. E. No Lander students objected. F. Thus, the Lander students are not environmentally aware. As I said, the passage has six statements. The indicators as, because and thus are given. The statement F is the final conclusion since it has the conclusion indicator thus and the import of the paragraph indicates that, that this statement is the main point of the argument. Statements B, C and D are connected by the premise indicators as a and because. So uh, in this way, this is the uh, diagram from D to C to B. Okay, so what was D? Because the building of the library destroyed the native habitat. From there we come to C as it has disappeared from the Lander campus and B the well-known greenwood white squirrel has become and endangered. So these are the three premises which are connected in a sequence. Now before we try to understand the situation over here, let us understand what modus tollens is. You will learn in detail about modus tollens, modus ponens and many others in chapter 9, the method of deduction, when we will come to that. For now, just remember that modus tollens is a form, it's a valid argument form in the form if A then O, not O, therefore not A. So if the first two premises are if A then O and the second premise is not O, then we can conclude that it is also not the case that it is A, that is not A. Okay, so keeping this in mind, let's read the first uh, proposition of the uh, passage. If students were environmentally aware, then they would object to the endangering of any species of animal. Then is not written, but it is implied. So it is a if and then situation, a hypothetical statement, which is like if A, then O. Now E. No student objected, which is similar to not O. That is the consequent, the second, the latter part of the uh, hypothetical statement is being denied. If these two premises are given, from there it follows as per modus tollens, what follows? That it is not the case that A, that is students are not environmentally aware. So now the negation of the consequent clause O, by the second premise leads us to the conclusion not A and not A is the same as statement F which we find in the argument. What is statement F? 
land students are not environmentally aware. After uh, identifying the structure of modus stolens in the passage, we can draw the diagram like this. From A, if students were environmentally aware, then they would object to the endangering of any species of animal. And second premise, E, no lander students objected. Therefore, the conclusion will be not A, that is, lander students are not environmentally aware. Now, as you can see in this picture, this is the final diagrammatic re representation of the argument which was contained in the passage we are discussing. And uh, the, we have to join the two separate diagrams. The first uh, one belongs to the premises, one leading to the other. And second, the uh, diagram uh, uh, based on modus tollens. When these two are combined in the way which you can see over here, we reach the uh, final diagram of the argument. So I hope uh, you have got some idea about paraphrasing and diagramming arguments. Uh, I have uploaded some answers uh, from the textbook Introduction to Logic by Kopi and Cohen in the uh, description below. You can uh, download from there and practice at home. In the next video, uh, we will start Chapter 5 from Deductive Logic which is categorical propositions. Uh, from there, we will cover categorical propositions and the four classes of cl categorical propositions and what do we mean by quality, quantity and distribution. Uh, please uh, stay tuned and don't miss the videos. Subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.